and thanks for joining us for another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. You are here as usual with Ben and Lauren and today we are talking about portable power for hiking or other ultra lightweight adventures, maybe your bike pack or kayak or all that sort of stuff like that. But before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe wherever you're listening to your podcast or jump onto Facebook and um, get in on all the action in the Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group where we talk about the episodes and possible upcoming topics, answer questions and share info and things like that. So hiking and portable power, I don't – I have a portable power pack. I don't have mini solar panels for the most part, like we were just talking about before the show. Yep. Conserving power is the main main sort of go-to in in dealing with that sort of stuff. For me, yeah, but I don't use – um, like we, we're talking just hiking, right? Not yeah. when I want to go camping. I've got batteries in the car yeah. and solar panels and things, and I and I use my, my devices quite liberally. But mm-hmm. um, hiking, I'm all about taking even less stuff. Yeah, totally. So, uh, a battery pack for me or a solar panel is quite a bit of extra weight. Yeah. Um, but I do often have my phone uh, for emergency purposes. But I've always just turned it off mm-hmm. and I turn it on. Uh, for a few minutes, check my messages, mm-hmm. uh, make a phone call if I need to, and turn it off again. And if you think a standard phone lasts, if you turn it on at, say, I don't know, 7 o'clock in the morning and off at 10 o'clock at night, mm. then that's, what's 15, 16 hours of continual runtime with you using yeah. it during the day. So if you're hiking for a week and you're turning it on for 10 minutes in the morning and night, then you've got more than enough battery life to get you through more totally. than a week of time just to check. Mm. But I guess, I guess uh, it needs to be – you might be the same, more open-minded that nowadays there's much more technology out there, yeah. maps on phones, um, so you're – and maybe you're tracking it for some reason mm-hmm. so that people can see where you are or, or you're, yeah. you're um, vlogging or, or blogging or whatever along the way and recording stuff. Totally. You're going to need to recharge. So mm-hmm. there are some options there, but you're going to have to carry extra weight. So yeah. I think – First thing for me, I don't, I don't know if I take that much extra hiking still anyway. That's just me. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, conserving battery power is kind of the first step, the lightest, simplest way about Definitely. Um, power when you're hiking. That's right. And I think also if you don't, because as you know, you mentioned before, these days people use their phone for more than just a phone. It's like a clock. It's a backup torch. It's camera. your camera. You touch on GPS or navigation device. Like there's a whole range of options that you're using your phone for. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are different ways, even if you are interacting with your phone, that you can conserve battery life, which would be the first port of call to begin with anyway, even if you're not turning it off, chucking it on airplane mode, Mm -hmm. um, just to use it as a camera on airplane mode, you're going to, you're still obviously going to be using a fair bit of battery because you're taking photos, but you're not constantly searching for satellites and doing all that mobile sort of usage. Mm -hmm. Even if you do, um, and I got found out about this recently, my partner's obviously really into tech gear and switch on and stuff. And he's like, if you, if your phone has Wi-Fi on, Mm. even if you're out at the park, it's still actively searching for Wi-Fi. So if yeah. your Wi-Fi capabilities are on, it's using power constantly checking Wi-Fi networks and making sure there's a list there, even if you're not actually interacting mm. with it. Same with Bluetooth, I think. Same with Bluetooth, exactly. Yeah. So even if you just have your phone normal but you turn Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off, you're still going to be using a heck of a lot less battery. Yeah. Um, yeah, so turning off those functionalities, there's just ways of sort of managing your device. I think. Um, I think airplane mode, I think that's what it's for. I've not actually looked into it, but I think Airplane Mode turns those things off automatically. But maybe yeah, if you but do also all of those the steps, phone, like also the phone data, and you uh, can't okay. you can't message or call. You can it just basically turns it into say like an iPod, right? Or something. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to get if you, I mean, I guess even if you've got it on all day, yeah, and all those things turn off, you're going to extend the life. So if you wait for three or four days hiking, you might yeah. you might actually get your battery to last that long. Yeah. Um, I think camera is probably the one that. We'd use up most of the, the power. Probably. So screen time is probably another one. Just turn the screen time to turns off after five seconds or something. Turns like off that. after so five seconds. Reduce your brightness. Yep. Um. Also, your notifications and your alerts as well, and things like turn that. Like off. turn it all off. Yep. Um. Because yeah. that's yeah. all. I, I'd probably just have my phone for for camera. I used to take a little pocket camera with AA batteries or something. Yeah. But yeah. It's gone now. And the cameras on phones are so good now that. Yeah, they're better than often the cheaper that. camera versions you can take. Yeah. 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 Yep. yeah. But failing that. Yeah, failing that. My um, my next thing would be a portable power pack mm-hmm. because they're generally fairly cost effective in terms of the size and the capacity that you can get. 
they're really easy to charge. You can do it at home. Um, like, you know, Ben's, if you're watching here, Ben's got one in his hand. I think it's a Biolite. What is this it, is Charge 80 charge, or what's that one? Oh, I'm not sure. I think it's the bigger one. I'm not sure what it's called. But So this is a, I'm just seeing 26,000 milliamp hour battery. Did you so. say 26,000? No, sorry. I read. Tw- I went to read twenty two w- watt hours, oh. and, and then I sorry. I bled in my head. I yeah. knew what I was talking about. Uh, so six thousand milliamp hours. <laughs> twenty two thousand so, six hundred. Yeah. Um, so six thousand milliamp hours. I've got a Google Pixel. Uh, one of I don't know what number. Just that, some sort of Google Pixel phone, yep. and I think it's got. 3,780 something milliamp hour battery on the actual phone. So something like that would charge my phone two full charges, almost two full charges, yeah. which is a lot. And there's not really any way if you're going away hiking that you're going to really need to do that unless you're going for a really long trip. Like I think even just normal usage, admittedly, my phone does get a bit of a pounding. Yeah. I would probably only need to put it on charge every one and a half to two days anyway, even just at home. I mean, habitually I charge it overnight, but do you know what I yep. mean? If I wasn't going to do it, I'd probably get almost two days usage out of my battery anyway. Yeah. So it's amazing that- how much battery life you use when you've got it and you like I find in my everyday life at work, mm. you're checking it all yeah. more often than I should, right? Yeah. And when I'm camping, I'm not. And then I, totally. I look at, it at the end of the day and I've still got 60% battery life left and I've had it on all day and then you, it, you then feel and guilty because you think, why still nobody's messaged you anything important. <laughs> so that's right. Yeah. Just, no one's contacted me still. So yeah, yeah. it's just that I'm not out there wishing someone would call me when I'm camping. I've totally. got other things to focus on. So. Yeah, I know yeah. exactly what you mean. So combine that with a battery pack, right? If you're getting two to three days or more out of just your standard phone and then you add the battery pack, this, I don't know what that would be, Maybe two, three hundred grams for, for that. Probably I'm not, not sure. even. Um, so you're but then yeah, extending maybe anything. four, five, six days of, of power just out of that. That's guy. right. And then something like your portable power pack, because it's got that USB output, it's really handy for other devices that require power when you're hiking, possibly like your rechargeable um, headlamp, for example, or. Um, what else? Maybe little mini lanterns or, you know, and generally the the devices that you have when you're out hiking are going to be small devices, but they're yep. all going to be rechargeable. And a portable power pack will tick those boxes for you and you don't necessarily have to think twice. You can charge it when you're at home. It just, you know, charge it overnight before you go on your trip, chuck it in your bag and Bob's your uncle, you're sorted. Yeah. I'm just having a look at this. So that we talk about things going to um, rechargeable, like there's a headlamp here. Yeah. It's rechargeable. Um, we'll talk about solar shortly, actually. I'll, I'll leave that one out. But this yeah. this is a – I think that we're talking before the show about the Petzl system being really good because some of the rechargeable headlamps have a, a built-in battery and when that battery reaches its life, you then need a whole new headlamp. But Yeah, because they're sealed. You can't replace them. That's right, yeah. yeah. But Petzl system, they've got this core – they call it the Petzl Actic core. core, is it, or something? This is not no brand placement by any – no, no, no. Means, but we never do that. But um, it is one of the few brands that are rechargeable that you can do as an end user. You can buy replacement battery packs and yeah. put them in for. And it's also this little battery thing that they do is if you do have a pencil headlamp that takes um, AAA batteries and you don't want to keep using AAA batteries, you can upgrade it to be a rechargeable one. Yeah. In, so it's, it's nifty. I was hoping to look to see how many milliamp hours it might have been, but it doesn't actually say on here, um, but it's significantly smaller than the battery pack we were talking mm. about before. But they do, it's got like two-year guarantee or three-year, 300 cycles, sorry. So batteries aren't cheap either. If you're buying good no, batteries, not, you're mm. probably actually better off dollar-wise in, in this anyway and yeah. then you're not throwing batteries out. We're, get, we're getting into it, leaving no trace. Trace, again, I know, I know. But, um, but this just charges via a, a USB so you could use the your power solar pack. power pack to, mm-hmm. to charge this as well. So mm. um, so then you're not carrying the extra batteries, yeah. disposable batteries And too, I think so. these days as well, those portable power packs, the technology in portable power now is they're not heavy. No. You know what I mean? They're not big. They're not heavy. They're something that's handy for you to have even in your day to day. Like I know I've got a small one um, that generally would sit in the bottom of my bag, um, handbag or something like that. It's not much bigger than, I don't know, 
I can't even think what it's Small, not much bigger than. Some of them are tiny. This is quite a big one, I think. Yeah, that, yeah, that is quite, yeah. quite a big one. But, yeah, they're handy to have across all applications. So it's not like you if you think to yourself, oh, I only go hiking, you know, do multi-day hiking trips a couple of times a year, it's still worth that as an investment, I reckon, to get a portable power bank. Yeah, I keep one in my backpack to charge yeah. my phone when I'm caught out just to give it a bit of a top up. So Absolutely. Yeah, yeah use them all over the place. Um, so yeah, battery, battery, um, battery packs or power packs, whatever you want to call them, are, yeah. are a great option. Some of them bigger, some of them smaller. But look for a lithium one it's going, for hiking. A lithium yeah, look for a lithium one. A I mean, and yeah, take into consideration your mobile phone on average will be around about four thousand milliamps. Um, another question or, or another thing to think about when you're looking at getting one, I sh- I think is like, you know, you can get ones that are 20,000 milliamps, for example, or you can get the ones that are 5,000 milliamps or 10,000 milliamps. I personally would probably prefer to take two smaller capacity ones than one big, huge one. But that's yeah. just, that's just my personal preference because, you know, sometimes the bigger, huger ones, they might take six to eight hours to charge. Mm-hmm. Some of the smaller ones, you know, are a lot quicker to charge. And so at least then you have the option of if you run one flat, you still have another one full, but then the one that you've got to charge won't take as long and yep. and things like that. Um, but if you're doing multi, multi, multi-day, like long multi-day stops, you might have an option to go through a town and charge it at, you know, an information yeah. visitor's centre or something like that as well. But I guess you'd, you'd need like a 240 volt adapter or something then. Is that what you're thinking? Or, you know, there's a lot of places, heaps of parks now that have – USB ports oh, yeah, they do, in, like in a, the a charging park station and things. Yeah. So we might start to see that in some of the shelters and That'd things cool. along, along um, you know, hiking trails and things. Yeah. Even wireless, like I can charge my phone, you just put a little pad on, oh, the, yeah. on the park bench and it charges it. So that's cool. you know, we might see more and more of that maybe. as we go into the future. So I guess mm. there's something to consider if you're not sure if you need it. Maybe as, as things roll on, USB charging options are going to be far more available Definitely. to us because it's so easy to get power from solar to USB because it's only five volts. So mm-hmm. solar panel to um, USB is, is really easy to it is generate super from easy. Any, any shelter. So um, probably should move on to solar then because that's, yeah. I guess that's probably, unless you've got somewhere to stop while you're hiking and recharge from what we like what we just mm-hmm. talked about, solar is really the only other option unless you're going to carry solar some sort of small would- yeah, solar's the know. next option if you want to use your phone in a super interactive way, I mm. think, in that you do want to take lots of photos, you do want to take lots of videos, you might be using it as a navigation or you might have some sort of app on there or if you like you and me and you want to roll the GeoPress, the, I mean the GeoCache oh, yeah. app on your phone <laughs> if you're out on a hike because yeah. you're whatever. Because I think, I don't know about you, but most people, or at least me, I used to have an actual handheld GPS I a did. long time ago, yeah, it was but I haven't as. for a long time because I just got my phone. It's still and in it's, my cupboard. I don't, yeah. I don't use it. And yeah. as time rolls on, the they get more and more pinpointy. Yeah. You know, on, on your phone, that's yeah. not a technical term. Apologies, <laughs> pinpointy. More accurate. More ac- <laughs> I could have just gone with accurate. Yeah, the phone is more accurate. You know, like yeah. 10 years ago, your phone wasn't super accurate if you wanted to use, for example, that geocaching app on your phone. Yeah. But now it's it's even better. So, um, yeah, so a lot of people will be using that as their GPS unit or their navigation device, and in which case you will be chewing through a lot more battery. Um, I so Portable solar panels are... Definitely an option. I would still be personally preferencing taking the power banks, char- like a charge power bank with you. Yep. Only because you don't, in my opinion, you don't really want to be relying on a small portable solar panel because the efficiency is, tends to be quite a lot lower on them. Mm-hmm. They do need full clear sun, which means like no cloud cover, no shade, things like that. Um, they also... Um, like, you know, if you're hiking and they're hanging off your backpack, you're always changing your body orientation if you're going up, you know, up a hill and then you might be going around a corner. And, you know, yep. you're always moving. You're not always going to have your backpack with your solar panels hanging mm. off in the optimal position to the sun. And then you're also having to rely on the fact that you will have really clear sun and strong sun. They can weigh a bit more. Um, so do you mean when you say take a power pack, do you mean take charge, take a solar panel but charge – the power pack from the solar panel and then well I'm, that's an I'm saying too, right? I'm saying first and foremost don't even bother with a solar panel right first and foremost I would personally just have a power bank 
mm-hmm. that you can fully charge at home, that you know 100% it's full, this is how much power you've got, it's reliable, you don't even have to think twice about it, whatever. Yep. It would only really be investing in a solar panel, I would say personally, if maybe you are doing um, bike packing or kayaking or you're doing yeah. an adventure where you can, even though it's still a, an ultralight adventure, mm-hmm. you've got you've got a bit more packing space or a bit more yep. weight to play with. Or maybe if you are going in a large group of people and so you might be stopping and having lunch and you can set your solar panel up, you know you've got good weather and things like that. But even still with the solar panels, I would be making sure that I had a power bank as well. I yes. wouldn't want to be relying on the solar panel to be plugged straight into my phone and hoping that the solar panel is going to charge my phone consistently yes. directly from the panel. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. You, you can, um, yeah. And plus you're using your phone during the day, right? So mm. we got, this is a little uh, solar panel from hardcore here that this, this little box here is a solar controller. So it does on a 12 volt system, it regulates the, the power yeah. into the device. So you can plug your device straight into that right, and charge it. Mm-hmm. But then you need to then hang this off your battery and then you're kind of stuck with this cable from your phone or your device to this. And yeah. it's going to be while you're hiking when you're probably using the device. Mm-hmm. So in reality, well, uh, my preference is, is like what you said. Yeah. If you're going to take a solar panel, you're still probably going to want to take one of these power banks. Yeah. So you've got a cable. There's a little pocket here for it specifically. So yeah. you can plug the power bank into the solar panel, hang that off the back of your pack, and then during the day you're hiking for eight hours or whatever, yeah. you're getting a trickle charge into that to top it up and then yeah. you're relying on that for power. So I think that's, that's a right. much better option. And I also think as well, um, just to interrupt you there, I don't know if you have ever had – a dodgy phone charger that the wiring in there's just gone a bit weird or whatever. And so you've plugged your phone in and it's sitting on a bench and it's just going phone, not charging, phone charging, phone, not charging. Cause it's not, your cable's a bit dodgy and it's not putting consistent power in. So if that's, if you've plugged your phone straight into a solar panel and you're out hiking and you're doing that because you need your phone to charge and every however long the voltage that the solar panel is putting out drops below what the phone minimum input requirement is it's going to be going not charging (laughs) charging (laughs) the whole time and you're probably going to be using more power from your phone constantly notifying you that it's charging not charging then if you just turned it off and chucked it in your bag and didn't use it to begin with yeah absolutely yeah i think i'm with you there yeah you can charge straight from these devices to your phone but i think you're better off with a a power bank and a solar panel but then if you talk about weight then because we're talking about hiking right you're then adding this, which oh, we don't know, actually have weights here, but you can find it on our, on our website. There's mm. a few different power banks on there, but you've got that plus this, and that's probably, I don't know, what, 500 grams. So yeah. you're, you're adding, you know, half a, half a kilo at least to your hike yeah. kit for that power. So I guess you're I then going to go back to work yeah, out the, how much you're going to use it. We've got hardcore panels on the table here, and I think they are – they're like small portable power ones, but there are better solar panel options for hiking that are going to be a lot lighter mm-hmm. um, and they are designed to be more ultralight. But again, yeah, it's just for me w- it would be just a matter of deciding what's important to you. Do you need to shave weight and and packing room for other stuff? Do you really need to have, um, you know, the ability to have – to be generating constant power or is your power requirements going to be enough to be covered by power banks before you go? Um, You know, cost is another factor, things like that, because you don't really want to be throwing a whole bunch of money and setting up a portable Mm. power system when you're hiking if you're not actually going to be using it. I guess you could take, I mean, maybe if you took, say, three of these, it's probably Mm. about the same weight as a solar panel anyway Mm. and takes up a portion of the space. So when I say these, I'm talking about the power banks. So, Yeah. yeah, just maybe take enough preloaded power before you go yeah. might be a better way about it. So yeah, yeah I know, um, I know uh, one of the women who works here at Sam, when she hikes, she's got a, a small hiking solar panel and a small little power bank that she takes with her because okay. she's doing something like the Lara Pinta, for example, because mm. she's done, I think she's done that like three or four times or something. Yeah. Then there's going to be, she's got a long time, there's no, you know, I don't even think there would be charging options well, along the Larrapin. I know there's I little know. spots at like, you know, a car parks and things. Someone will correct me, I'm sure. But well, there's, I, I did a long time ago and there were shelters mm. and back then they were, they were going way back that I did it. Yeah. Um, which is 
brings me back to what I said before. Maybe yep. maybe they're considering in some of these shelters putting putting stuff solar like that and in. USB charging points in there to cater for yep. this. Sorry, I butted in there. No, but that's okay. But like you know, if if you're going away for we're talking weeks on a hike, or mm. you're going away like proper 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 bush and you're not crossing through anything at all, then it might be a good option to have even just as an emergency yep. if you want to invest in, you know, smaller lightweight. But again, factor in that efficiency and how how functional they're actually going to be for your style of trip. Well, Larrapin's a trail. It's a central Oz. You're in the sun. You're in the sun all the time. time. Yeah, if that's you're true. hiking in the Blue Mountains or yeah. the high country or something like that. Tasmania or, where, or something. Tasmania where you're under tree cover all the time, mm. you're probably carrying – this mm-hmm. solar panel, that extra weight for yeah. very little bit of benefit because you're yeah. always in mottled kind of, um, you know, you're not in full sun. Yeah. That often. The portable power packs might also just occur to me that if you are, um, you know, if you're someone who's hiking, if you say you're a climber, for example, and you're someone who's hiking into a spot and you set up a little base camp and you're going off doing climbing trips, solar panels, sure, because you can have yeah. them at your campsite and they can sit there absorbing the sun for most of the day yeah. um, and things like that. Then they're probably a good investment to have. I've thought about this type for the campsite as well because mm. you can just plug it in hang on the side of your tents or something and, mm. and you, your car's independent of, you know, well, I've got enough USB ports in the car, but yeah, if you do, maybe you don't have an auxiliary battery, that's a great option for, for charging in the yeah. campsite. I think Biolight, maybe that's what Sam has, but the Biolight does some quite uh, lightweight Sam's ones. a goal zero, I think, from our combo. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. There's a few of different but ones Biolite out there. Biolight do do some, goal zero do some. Okay. And I know Companion do some like this mm. as well, which have, they'll have different outputs as well. So that's the balance too. You can get a bigger solar panel. It's going to charge your phone quicker, but you're going to be carrying more weight because there's extra panels to it. So then you go into that whole consideration yeah. of size of solar panel and, and things as well. That's so. true. But when you talked about Biolite before, they also have like little hiking stoves. Yes. I think it's called, uh, I wanted to say Pocket Rocket, but that's an MSR one. Is it, there's one that's just um, called Camp Stove. Camp, that, it? Yeah, it's a, like a little hiking stove that sort of all packs in on itself. So it's nice and compact. But when you're burning sticks and things in it, it yep. generates its own power. So you can actually charge your phone off your stove whilst you're cooking your dinner. Yeah. So you don't need cool. solar panels. It's just got this cool little system where you can, yeah, your phone or your headlamp yeah, straight I, off that. I don't, we don't have the de- details in front of us, but, yeah, it's a built-in battery. Yeah. There's a name for how that the heat it uses sticks, right? So you use just sticks yeah. to burn it. And I think it, last time we talked about I've, I've the actually, cool by light fire pit, we <laughs> were like, uh, we should look this yep. up and now we've done it again. <laughs> we've come up prepared again, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's, yeah, it trans, make, turns the heat into power and that then runs a little fan to help the, the, the stove or the fuel burn better. Mm. But at the same time, it charges a battery that you can charge your phone from. Yeah. So, so I guess you're then getting power. That's probably a more reliable way of power because you know – you can light the stove mm-hmm. and it's going to charge that battery. Yeah. You just got to balance how much charge you get out of how long you have that burning versus how much power you're using. That's right. Same as solar panel, I suppose. How, how much power can your stove generate? How much power can your solar panel generate? Mm. Are either of those going to equal the power you're using during the day Definitely. and night or whenever you need yeah, it? So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then there are some other, not head torches, but there are some little lanterns that you can get. Um, oh, yeah, like one here. On What's that, a Lucy? Here. So Lucy. Um, Lucy? Did Lu- you say, what is it? Is it Lucy? It's Lucy? I don't know, L-U-C-I. Yeah, I think it's Lucy. <laughs> um, Could be Lucy, but I don't Luchi. think it is. Oh, so it's Lucy, M-Powered. I don't know, it's kind of two I've brands to it. I've always called it Lucy. It, <laughs> <laughs> Lucy. So Lucy. Lucy like, or Lucy. They're really we'll cool We'll find though. out. We'll we, find that one out. They're quite affordable and they're a little inflatable lights that pack flat, but they've got a solar panel in the top, so it's a built-in battery. Yeah. And you could put that on top of your There is actually, the these guys also do one, which it's not this particular model, but it's the next upgrade one of this where the solar panel on it charges the lantern, but it also has enough stored battery for you to give your phone yes. a top up charge as so well. I think it's Lucy Pro so, or something. It's yeah, it's like yeah. a Pro or, yeah. But there yeah. are quite a few um, products that we're seeing more and more of these days that double as a, a power bank, you know, not enough to yeah. give your phone a full charge, but as in an additional additional top up charge from a battery in in a, a appliance like a lantern or something that you'd already be using like yeah. i think the uh, black diamond do like emoji base camp lantern oh, yes. and things like that that does the same sort of thing and so if you are hiking or or doing your your bike packing or your lightweight adventures and and a lantern is something that you're considering um that could be another way around it too without having to get extra extra gear to carry on top of that yeah just strap everything on top of your pack while you're yeah. walking and let it yep. charge. Absolutely. As long as you're in the open sun. I'm just imagining you strapping it to your head. 
Well, I, as we were talking here now, I do Who have needs a hat? Of, why don't you? Why well, don't they no, no, design no, I a hat? Say that. <laughs> Guess what I was going to say. I, I was just thinking on the way. Why <laughs> they don't have a hat with? It's the same with house roofs, right? Yeah, Imagine yeah. if every house roof in the country had it was just automatically installed with this solar sensitive material. Totally. Same with a hat, right? Well, if, I don't you understand. That'd be the best. And the and on top of your pack and everything should just be just a be, built in yeah. solar panel. They totally should you know? make that. That's yeah. that's amazing. If anyone makes it, we said it first. Yeah. So, yeah. Can somehow name yeah. it after us. You heard it here first. Yeah, you yeah. did. <laughs> oh, goodness me. So um, hot and cold is probably the only other thing to consider too. If you're, oh, in, how if temperature you're hiking affects in a cold it, environment, yeah. battery life is, is shortened. And cold temperatures do all sorts of funny things with the battery. So if you're in um low up into trail, probably not a problem, although it's cold overnight. Um you're gonna get more battery life because yeah. of the warmer weather. So you will. colder life shortens the battery. So that's yeah, just one thing to have a think about. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think like if you're talking about wanting to add things like iPads or laptops in as well because maybe you are uh, you are an online blogger or you have more content that you have to create when you are away, there are different power solutions for you. This isn't going to necessarily be um, yeah. be the up up your avenue. There's there's other stuff you can look into for this, but this is sort of more. We're just really more covering mobile phone and head head t- torches and tiny little USB. Yeah. I think we can do another episode things. on um, can, uh, charging for just camping because laptops mm. need sixteen volt and there's yeah. different considerations. A and lot more the, considerations. The cars. Are, I'm kind of in that process now, so yeah. Keep an eye out for a future episode on that one. That'd yeah, be a fun chat. absolutely. Yeah. So I guess in summary, um, first things first. You know, for for portable power when you're hiking, first step: conserve. Conserve what you've already conserve got. Conserve what you've already got. Conserve the the head torch and your battery, your phone, all of that stuff. Just conserve it. Second step would be personally to um, look power at banks. portable power banks. And then third step, invest in a solar panel if you need it. But make sure you're weighing up cost versus efficiency versus weight and all of those sorts of things. There's no magic solution that says this will give you enough power. You need to understand yeah. what you what you can create and yeah, balance that with what you're using. Absolutely. And there's no one answer for everybody, but that would be the process primarily. Oh, yeah, cool. I hope that was helpful. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us again uh, today, folks. And don't forget, as I said at the beginning of the episode, to subscribe wherever you're listening to us and also jump onto our Facebook group to join in the conversation. Yeah. And we will see you again next week. See you later. Catch you later, folks. <laughs>